Today I'm going to take this CR Scan Ferret, one of Creality's newest and most affordable 3D scanners, and use it to turn an everyday spectrum radio into a tactical radio. What's going on everyone? Today, CR Scan Ferret is here on the bench. Now this is the second Creality 3D scanner that I've owned, and this one is their most affordable option yet. This one, under 300 bucks. I've actually been using this scanner for a handful of months now at this point, and I've got a lot of scans under my belt with it, and comparing it to its bigger brother, the CR Scan Lizard, that I've had really good luck with over time, I feel like this one is a good value for the money. If you're just getting into 3D scanning, you're not 100% sure if it's gonna be something you want to continue with in the long run, at under 300 bucks, it's a pretty good investment. Also, this one is capable of being used with just a cell phone rather than having to have a PC to scan it with. Granted, to be actually able to utilize the scans that you have after the fact, you're probably gonna need a computer anyway, but if you wanna go scan something away from your computer, if you only have a you know PC that's not gonna move out of your office or wherever you may have it, then that may be a benefit to you. Now, I haven't used the mobile scanning portion of this because it's based on Android tech and I don't run an Android device, at least not one that's powerful enough to run this. If you are an Android user and you wanna use this in that way, check out the specs that they ask you to have to be able to use this with your Android device before counting on it that you're going to be able to use it. You're gonna need one of the current gen higher end Android phones to be able to scan with this. But if you're not gonna use it that way, you're gonna plug it right into your PC. What you get is you've got the scanner itself here. It's got a tethered cord that goes into it, screws in from the side, kind of like an old monitor cable. And then you get this grip slash tripod combo. Now this grip is actually a battery bank because if you do plan to use it with your phone, it requires its own power source and they want you to have a reliable higher amperage output than your phone may produce. So you have one cord that goes from the scanner into your phone and then another that goes into this little battery powered grip. Even if you're not going to use it as a battery bank, it makes for a convenient handle and a nice place to set things. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna take this Spectrum SLT3 radio. This is a radio that comes with a lot of axial vehicles and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, Axial is a brand of RC car. This is typically an RC car channel. And we're gonna take this run of the mill SLT3 radio and we're gonna scan it. And then we're gonna make some modifications to this to make it a little bit more useful on the trail. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, this radio, as you may be able to tell, is black. Black is the hardest color to scan. So with an object like this, typically what you're going to want to do is spray it with a developer spray or dry shampoo. If you're not familiar with dry shampoo, I wasn't either until I got into 3D scanning. I'll link the brand that I find to be the best for this that I buy off Amazon. It's also the cheapest one. So getting regular 3D scanning developer spray is much, much, much more expensive. So Dry shampoo will work for most of you out there. One thing I am going to do is remove the wheel here because I've got some plans for that as well. I went today, made a handful of stops and got a number of items that I want to adapt onto this radio. You're gonna get an overview of how this process went through the 3D scanning, some of the modeling, some of the 3D printing, and finally the execution. So let's dive into that. So this is the software, the opening page of the software for the CR Scan Ferret. Super basic, just basically confirming that it's got a connection to the scanner. Once you start into a new project, it gives you a handful of selections here. And they're just very easy to answer questions, like what type of thing you're doing, how large it is, what you want to capture. So when you're doing small items, it kind of sets some of those options for you. And this classifies as a small option. When you first start, it kind of gives you a preview of what it's showing. The green dots or the green in the center of the screen there is what you want. Once you hit start the scan, that's when it actually starts capturing and remembering each of those dots. And you really, you just work yourself slowly around the item until you have a basically all green item. That's the best case scenario. You can lose tracking at times. You need to kind of go back to where you were when it lost it and go. It's a pretty 
self-explanatory setup. It will take a little bit of practice, but once you get done, then you're ended up with this, which is a point cloud. All of those little points saved into an area. And this is where you get to kind of look at it before you process it. And processing is where it takes those dots and then puts them into uh, surfaces or more solid, you know, flat areas or, you know, not necessarily flat, but just flat areas rather than just dots. And that's when you get something that looks like this, which looks like our radio. Now you can see there's a hole there in the bottom where the trigger specifically would be. And that is a problem for me. So with this scanner and this software, it doesn't allow you to add scans to an item. You have to get it all done at once. So I just rescanned that and it didn't take too long. just a handful of minutes. Now for the next project here, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I got some clay or some Play-Doh brand clay because I wanted to do a special type of wheel. So I made it about the shape that I need. I added this line for indexing and then I just put it onto the radio there and just grabbed it just to kind of leave my imprint on how I was holding the radio, at least how I did. Now, the shape of this in general doesn't really matter. But once I had that done, back in to do another scan, answering the same questions again, and just grabbed the uh, the shape of what I did there. This one, it, it got some you know other things in the background there, but the software does allow you to get rid of some of that stuff. So once I went through and did the initial processing, you can go in and use their selection tool to just grab what isn't needed by holding shift and using the lasso, going around, selecting, and then deleting being that that is not the portion that we were after. And then we're left with this weird looking lump that that is what I was actually wanting. Now, once I had this, some of this information is what I thought was going to be needed for the project. So we're going to export this. And even if you don't know CAD, you can use a 3D scanner. I'm going to use a file called Mesh Mixer, which is just a free program that you can bring in these types of files, which are just a mesh file. And it allows you to kind of play with it with some very basic tools. So you bring it in there, transform just allows you to rotate it around, get it down into the area that you're after. Once you get it roughly in the position that you want, it's helpful to just kind of get it oriented. It's not absolutely needed, but it helps for a number of reasons. So once I got it in there, I made some cuts using planes. So it kind of got rid of the you know, uneven bottom surface that I didn't need you get that cut off. And then it will put a flat plane in the bottom for you if you want by selecting the fill type up there in the top left corner. So I'm just simplifying this part down to something that in the end will create some surfaces for me to 3d print from. Same thing at the top as the bottom. I didn't need the full piece. I was just kind of looking for those imprinted areas that I had you know, formed from previous. Now, once I got there, this thing still has all this weird kind of texture. So I grabbed a smoothing tool, playing around with the settings a little bit. And I went through and I just took off all that weird texture, just making things look a little bit uh, less organic and a little bit more, you know, reasonable to bring into any sort of CAD or anything like that. And this is just a very simple, you know, drag the mouse around to get things to look about how I wanted. There was nothing scientific about this. It was just, I was going for a smoother looking texture than what came directly off the 3D scan. Now this would be a 3D printable part from here, but this part on its own for me, isn't going to necessarily be that useful. I'm gonna do some more with it. Now we're into Fusion 360. I brought in our final 3D scan and you can see that the trigger detail is actually more shown there. The backside of the radio wasn't fully complete as far as the scan goes, but that wasn't an area that I was looking to have a bunch of detail on. Here you can see that wheel where I brought it in and I added the mounting information that I needed to work as a steering wheel on my radio. I took and modified it, cleaned it up so that it would give me a perfectly fit ergonomic feel to our wheel. Now these circles and lines here, those are kind of denoting the clearance areas, one where my fingers would go and how the trigger would follow. I know that I needed to dodge those areas for all of these items that I was placing on here. Can't be tactical without having all kinds of accessories. So I went, got my items first and then placed them in the CAD model about how I thought that they would fit without getting into any of those clearance areas. I've got a Red Bull can on the side. You can probably tell that we've got some chapstick and nothing is tactical if it doesn't have pick rail. So we threw some of that 
on the top. Next to it, we've got our tool bits, and then I just connected the dots, making things stick together. So there we've got the 3D printed part that's going to hold all of those items up top. Pick rail can be used for almost anything these days. One thing that was an easy find for me was a 3D printed GoPro mount. So we threw that on the front. Then connecting the dots down the bottom side, those brown items down there at the bottom are four extra double A's held in place by some rare earth magnets pressed into the bottom side or the back side of that 3D print. That blue item there, that is going to be a miniature utility knife. Now, the front area here has a few items. This is a ratcheting little driver for a quarter inch drive that'll work with our tool bits and things can get windy on the trail. Some chapstick, felt like that's needed. Cup holder, self-explanatory, can't be tactical cool if you're not hydrated. Tool bits and a lot of these parts in general are all going to be held in place with some rare earth magnets. And this piece on the front isn't complete in the model here, but it's actually an LED work light. This was a work light that I took dis and disassembled from another light and just kind of recreated a lot of those little parts into this model including the wire chase, the uh, PCB, the button system, the LED, the charging port. And from there, we just had to get everything 3D printed. Now, Creality is the maker of this scanner and you may know them from 3D printing. They've probably got more people into 3D printing than anybody else. I have an Ender 5 S1 and it's been a solid printer. If you're just getting into 3D printing, it's a good option to look at. The, price is low and if you're into tweaking you can really get that thing tuned up to make some nice parts. I've got multiple 3D printers here and as far as one that I could recommend to people just getting in I think that Ender 5 S1 would absolutely do the job. Getting into the assembly of this it was really just fitting all the parts as I had in the CAD package everything from the molded power button here the lithium ion pack that worked with that original LED work light that I had just making sure that everything fit based on my design. I was able to get everything done on this design in the first shot without having to go back and make iterations on my dimensions or anything like that. Even my snap fit chapstick holder for the front. The LED work light was the most intense piece as it had to have a lot of pieces that cleared for the uh, resistors on the back of the PCB and the power button, all that. This clamshell design, everything snaps together, then the two halves of that 3D print screw together themselves. The cup holder bolted to the side with a handful of screws. I pressed in rare earth magnets in a number of places on this, and just to make sure that they didn't come out, I put some black CA glue across there. That ratchet snaps right in and is held secure with the six total rare earth magnets. The utility knife on the side also has rare earth magnets pressed on the back side of it to hold it in place. Now you can see here the cuts that are made on the bottom and back of this piece and those were all made directly off of that 3D scan. Those cuts would have been very difficult to figure out if I didn't have such accurate 3D scan data. Once I had that everything just bolted right in place. So here we have it, the most tactical radio I could make. Now, of course, this was done for fun. In reality, would you ever probably carry a radio with this much stuff on it? No, but we're just trying to exercise a little bit of what 3D scanning can help you do. This project went so quickly because I was able to just take this little sub $300 scanner, do a quick scan and have all of the difficult to measure things that you would normally have to go through a trial and error process to do already accomplished. And now we've got this, this little SLT3 radio with the most perfectly fitting ergonomic wheel that you could possibly have on a ready to run quality radio. We've got a GoPro on top with a loom cube on the side for additional lighting power. That of course mounted to the Picatinny rail. That rail you could use a million attachments that are already available. Next to the rail, we've got our quarter inch drive bits. These held in place with some rare earth magnets. The tip goes into the holder there on the end just to keep things a little bit more secure and they're held well in place with those magnets. If you do need to utilize them, you just pull those bits off there and we remove the ratchet from the front of the radio. Snap them into place and works like a dream. This is 
kind of funny as this project was, this is actually one of the more handy little pieces that I found. Harbor Freight for like three bucks. Kind of a cool little find on that particular tool. Again, the magnets hold everything super secure. You get it anywhere near and it's like, those par those are, it's in there. Like it's not coming off. The work light, also not the most ridiculous thing. To have a light on your radio, if you needed to actually work on something in the dark there in front of you, I wouldn't hate it if I actually had that capability here or there. A few different brightness levels and then that last one there with that on the top. The charging status LED and the USB charging port are available right down there at the bottom to charge the lithium ion battery that is housed in the base. The AA batteries there on the side, again, they're held in place by some rare earth magnets deep down in there, but pull them out, go in there, and then they'll just click into place and are held tight. We do have the utility knife housed here on the side. You can pull it out. This is just a mini little utility knife. Again, Harbor Freight, a couple bucks. Also wouldn't be the most, uh, the worst thing to have on your radio. Chapstick, you all need it, you always forget it. Wouldn't it be nice to have? And then of course, some extra energy for the trail. The Amber Edition, uh, purely chosen for the color for this particular video. Also, it matches the upgraded aluminum anodized GoPro knob. And nothing can be tactical if it doesn't have paracord. So we did a Joe Ropes lanyard attachment on the back side. It is nice because this is a lot longer than a standard lanyard. Actually, one of my favorites. Again, I hope you guys can appreciate this for the comical relief that it was intended to be. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Go check out the Creality CR Scan Ferret. For the money, it's a great purchase. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I absolutely can recommend getting into 3D scanning. It's so powerful and it's come so far so quickly and the cost has continued to drop. So give it a thought. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.